Okay, today we're gonna repair a 2015 Toyota Corolla. It rear-ended another car. The headlight, upper tie bar, and the apron took the brunt of the hit, which is not what they're meant for. Since it hit a weak part of the front end, it kind of crumpled up a lot of stuff. So let's get started. First we're gonna pull the hood off. Pull the wheel off. Now we're going to take the fender off, what's left of it. Take the cowl screen off. Pull that apron out a little bit. Straightening out the upper rail a little bit as we pull the apron. Taking the washer bottle out of the way. Fish the wiring harness out. Pull the apron a little bit more. We're going to end up replacing all of this, putting it in the factory locations. So nothing's going to be spliced together. Get the ABS unit out of the way. Now we're going to cut the pieces of the tie bar out. Take that upper center piece out. Now I'm just cutting out the rest of the apron. Get it out of the way. We'll trim out the rest of the parts later. I wanted to get a pull where the motor mount mounts. So I had to get it out of the way. Taking the strut out so I can get in there. Give myself a little more room. Straightening out that upper rail a little bit more. Now we're going to take the remainder of that rail out that we didn't cut. Now we're going to get it nice and straight where the hood hinge mounts. To replace this would have taken quite a bit of time. I would have had to remove a few more panels, so I chose to just I chose to straighten it a little bit. I was measuring that a little bit, make sure everything was all right, right where it belongs and that everything was isolated to in front of the tower, which it was, so that was all good. Taking the radiator out of the way so I can get this piece out. Trimming out the rest of our apron. Sorry. Okay, now we're going to put our seam sealer in there. Spreading it out, making it kind of look factory. To smooth it out a little bit, uh, use a little pre-cleano and it makes it a little smoother. Kind of duplicate the factory look 
although they were kind of sloppy with it anyway, so. Now I'm gonna put the motor mount back in, put the strut back on after it was all painted. The wheel back on. Just setting the ABS unit down in there, we're gonna change that later. Put the radiator and condenser back in. These are the originals. They were both still good. Putting the upper tie bar on, center support. Bumper reinforcement. Put the fender on. Now we're gonna change the ABS unit the brake lines and the AC lines. Some of the brake lines were pretty bent, so I changed them all the way to the master cylinder. And then the two fronts all the way to the brake hoses. Changing the high side AC line. Put the cow, lower cowl screen in there. The windshield wiper transmission back in. Now we're going to bleed the brakes. Gonna put our hood on. My parts car had a little damage, so the hood hinges weren't totally straight. So, good thing about having nice cheap metal is it bends real easy back into place. So I just push down on the hood to line those gaps back up. Now it's all painted. I'm going to put it all back together. Put the headlights in. Had some bulbs out. Found one fuse. Found another fuse. Now we're going to repair the horn wire. And I'll put the door back together. the other door back together now we're going to pull the rear bumper off it's got a bunch of scratches on it so it needs to be painted put the washer bottle back in we'll route the hose for the washers and put the cow screen back on the wipers on. Sometimes it takes a few tries to get them in the right spot. I think the magic number was three this time. Put the bumper back on. Put the grill in. I'll put the rear bumper back on after it was painted. We're going to put the fender liners in. I hate this part. That's why I waited. They're just annoying to me. Put the license plate bracket on. Now we're going to put brakes on the front. New pads and rotors. We'll just adjust up the rears. They were there was plenty of shoes left on them, they were just out of adjustment. Gonna mount and balance some new tires for it. I did two for the rear at this time, but I ended up putting two more on the front later.
there you go. Okay, all you time sticklers that like to track my time to completion on these projects. I know, it took me four months. I did buy this in the middle of the 55 Chevy pickup restoration, and that took up a lot of my time. One weekend when the guys were doing paintwork on the Chevy, I did manage to get this in and get the majority of the big stuff done. I pulled it, welded in the inner structure, and put it together for the most part. Of course, that's when I proceeded to lose most of that footage. In an effort to get my videos to show a little more detail, I put the camera a little too close. Somehow, managed to unplug it, and the memory card then forgot everything in that file, which was the majority of the job. That kind of killed my motivation on this car. Sometimes, the only motivation I have is making videos for you guys. And since I figured I didn't have a video on this car, it really kind of killed any motivation. It wasn't a bad car. It wasn't a hard job. It probably only took me about four days start to finish, but it did take me a lot of time to get the motivation to work on it for those four days. Since you missed a portion of this video, to make up for it, I'm gonna make some videos that you guys have been asking for, some how-to videos. They're gonna show everything you missed in this video, and then some, in detail, in real time, with me narrating. Hopefully I get it right, if I do, I'll keep going with more how-to videos about the whole rebuild process and hopefully get rid of some of the myths that surround rebuilt cars, wrecked cars, and salvaged cars. There's a lot of misinformation out there and I'd like to reach as many people as I can. So like this video if you enjoyed it. Share it if you think somebody else might. Subscribe if you want to see some of the upcoming videos or just more time lapses. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next month.